بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام uh, عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good afternoon everybody according to مكة time zone and good morning and good uh, evening for other time zones uh, Thank you for the organizing committee for inviting me for this uh, course review and uh, I'll try to be stick to uh, the time My talk will be about the gastric outlet obstruction So to start with this topic we will go through this uh, outlines uh, uh, we'll go through basics some embryology and some anatomy then of the stomach then the um, differential diagnosis of gastric outlet obstruction and we'll go with details in each uh, uh, part of the uh, differential diagnosis of gastric outlet obstruction so as introduction stomach is um, a j-shaped dilatation of alimentary tract and it's mostly mostly functioning as a reservoir which is uh, storing a, a large quantity of, of uh, food so this food will um, uh, at, in the stomach will start the process of digestive function and then uh, it will release it uh, by uh, uh, slowly and gradually to the small caliber of duodenum. In general, the stomach volume range from 30 ml for neonate and up to 1.5 ml to uh, 2, 2 liter in the uh, adult. So as embryology, to go through embryology, stomach is recognized in the fourth uh, week of gestation as dilatation of the distal uh, foregut. So and the, there is a, a differential growth of the uh, gastric wall where the dorsal aspect will grow more rapidly than the ventral aspect. Then the stomach will rotate around itself, around its own longitudinal axis by 90 degree, which will ori uh, orienting the greater curvature, which is the dorsal aspect will be on the left and the lesser curve, uh, which is the ventral aspect will be on the right, which will give the, uh, uh, the um, normal or the, uh, which we know the anatomical and the normal shape of the stomach, uh, which will lie transversely in the mid and the left upper abdomen. Uh, this event is also explain how the vagal innervation of the stomach was in the chest, the vagal nerves was right and left, and then in the abdomen start to be anterior and posterior because of this rotation and this uh, differential growth. Uh, going to the anatomy, uh, we know that the stomach is an intraperitoneal, uh, totally intraperitoneal uh, organ except small area in the gas, in the esophageal gastric junction and it's composed of cardia, pandas, body, pyloric antrum and pylorus and also um, from outside the lesser curve and greater curve. So this is the anatomical landmark of the stomach. Going for the blood supply of the stomach, uh, main blood supply of the stomach is coming from the celiac trunk the electron trunk will give us the left um, gastric artery, which will uh, 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 supply the uppermost of the uh, lesser curve and the uh, right uh, gastric uh, artery, which is coming from the common hepatic artery, which will supply the lesser curve. We know that the stomach is highly vascular and there is like more than five blood uh, vessels uh, uh, um, uh, providing the stomach with the blood supply. Also, there is a left gastrobibloic artery, which is branched from a uh, splenic artery, which will supply the greater curvature. And right uh, gastrobibloic artery, which is a branch from gastroduodenal artery, which will also supply the rest of the uh, greater curvature and the short gastric coming from the splenic artery. Same as the uh, uh, venous drainage, uh, there is left and uh, right gastric and uh, right gastrobibloic, which all at the end will drain in the portal. Uh, circulation either through the splenic vein or through the uh, severe mesenteric vein. So um, uh, to go to the main uh, topics, it's gastric outlet obstruction. So we will go through uh, these differential diagnoses. We can differentiate the causes of congenital of the gastric outlet obstruction to congenital or acquired, or we can differentiate it, or I, might, I mean we can classify it, classify it as the uh, the age of the um, uh, baby. But anyway, uh, whatever uh, classification you want to, uh, obtain, to uh, obtain, we will go through uh, these to this, um, topics, congenital pyloric atresia, uh, infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis in details, and the rest will be just like uh, headings of each. So we'll start with the most common, the pyloric stenosis, and we'll go through these uh, elements. So in history, uh, first description of uh, post-mortem finding was in 1717 by Blair. Then Hirschsprung provided the first complete description of pyloric stenosis, and he labeled it as a, a congenital and uh, related for a failure to involution of uh, fetal pylorus. But uh, in, uh, uh, we will see later, is it congenital or something else? In 1908, uh, uh, first uh, surgical correction where they split the hypertrophic uh, 
pectoric muscle and uh, closing it uh, transversely. But uh, Ramstead in 1912 19, 19, suggests that the uh, muscle doesn't need to be uh, closed and uh, all of us know that we are now adopting the Ramstead either open or laparoscopic but it's now all of us doing the Ramstead uh, bilaromyotic. So in epidemiology, um, bilaromyotic stenosis is the, one of the most common causes of gastric outlet obstruction in infants with an incidence ranging from 1.5 to 4 percent of to 4 per 1,000 life birth. And um, it's uh, less prevalent in uh, uh, African-American and Asian children than Caucasian. Uh, boys has the upper, uh, more common in boys than the girls. And is it congenital? Uh, there is uh, studies that showed uh, they collect like more than 1,000 upper GI study. They did it for a new net for uh, different reasons. And uh, upon that 1,000 upper GI study, there were no evidence of bioloric stenosis. But uh, some of them later on developed uh, uh, bioloric stenosis, which indicates that it's not congenital. Same done with an ultrasound, more than 1,400 babies underwent ultrasound for different reasons in their uh, early days of life. Then uh, some of them present later on with bioloric stenosis. So it's not congenital, it's mainly acquired. So that we call it, it's now shifted from congenital hypertrophic bioloric stenosis to infantile hypertrophic bioloric stenosis. Um, there is no definitive cause, uh, but uh, some genetic and environmental factor may, may play a role in uh, pathophysiology. So what is the evidence? There is evidence that the genetic uh, predisposition is um, uh, available in the bioloric stenosis because of the variability of the races and uh, we we are seeing it in Caucasian more than Asian Asian and more than African and uh, also male predominance and it's coming uh, with positive family history and in certain uh, blood groups and also for environmental factor that method of feeding um, like in breastfeeding versus formula and erythromycin exposure or transbioloric uh, feeding uh, this will cause this will was attributed with the finding of bioloric stenosis. Also, let's go for the molecular uh, uh, level. So um, in the researcher found that the substance B, which is the substance B, which is uh, a factor responsible about the enteric muscle, they found it somehow it was deficient in the, in the uh, section of the bioloric muscle. And uh, I just facing problem with the flipping the presentation. So the uh, substance B is a neurotransmitter responsible for enteric muscle contraction and uh, they found it it's um, uh, uh, accumulated in the uh, bioloric uh, uh, area which can cause the bioloric spasm and also it, uh, it's fine to be present in, uh, in all patients with uh, infantile hypertrophic bioloric stenosis. Um, uh, for the uh, neural development and uh, enteric system, uh, neuroenteric system uh, also the neurotrobin also noted to be decreased in um, uh, patients with bioloric stenosis at the area of the bioloris, which is an important uh, nerve differentiating to, uh, factor. And also they found um, uh, tyrosine kinase receptor is not the present in the uh, tissue of bioloric stenosis, which is specific for the uh, receptor specific for neutral uh, neurotrophin. Also, uh, there is deficient in glial drift uh, growth factor, which is an important factor for the maturation and growth of the enteric uh, uh, nervous system. All of these support that the, uh, there is um, uh, some factors uh, causing this uh, bioloric stenosis. Also, nitric oxide uh, can induce, which is uh, an uh, induce regular muscle uh, relaxation in the GI system found to be deficient in the uh, bioloric stenosis, so it might be uh, a cause and responsible about the bioloric spasm which caused to bioloric stenosis. Going to uh, clinical features, the clinical features, it's um, the cardinal uh, clinical uh, presentation is non-bilious projectile vomit. And the age, uh, usually it's two to eight uh, weeks, and it sometimes it presents uh, later in the uh, breathe uh, Sometimes the uh, vomiting, it can be uh, bloody or cuffy ground as a result of gastritis. And infants remain hungry after the vomiting and between the uh, vomiting attack. Uh, also, delaying in presentation can cause severe dehydration. Other factor, other uh, clinical uh, features can be presented, uh, can be diarrhea or yawns. So what is the differential diagnosis of this presentation? It could be surgical or medical. Medical like gastroenteritis, uh, GERD, uh, increasing 
intracranial pressure, other metabolic disorder, or surgical like antral web pyloric atresia, antropyloric deprecation cyst, and ectopic hypertrophic pancreatic tissue in the pyloric areas. So what is the diagnosis? How we can make the diagnosis? The diagnosis can be made by history, history of uh, the clinical features which we uh, just mentioned, and the physical examination. Physical examination, baby should be examined well. Uh, first, uh, to examine his vital, to assess his level of dehydration if there is, and then to uh, the examination should be uh, carried where the boy is in warm in his mother lab if can if it can be and patient is um, relaxed with the knee flex and uh, uh, if can if it can be to um, insert an ng tube just to suck the whatever it's accumulated in his uh, in his stomach uh, or uh, ask the mother just to give him like dextrose so it will ease the baby and uh, by this way usually uh, it can be palpated blood work of course um, we need to have um, uh, a chemistry panel uh, for uh, urea electrolyte for the blood gases and also for CBC as part of the preoperative workup. The gold standard and the diagnostic uh, material is the ultrasound, which is uh, showing the bioloric mass. Um, it has should be uh, the bioloric thickness should be four millimeter or more, and the uh, bioloric canal should be sixteen millimeter or more. Less than this can be accepted in the premature, but it, it can be accepted as a thickness of three millimeter. Uh, if it, if the ultrasound doesn't show uh, the bioloric uh, mass, and still there is um, a suspicion of the uh, bioloric stenosis, or if there is another differential diagnosis, need to be ruled out. So the upper GI contrast study is the next uh, diagnostic modality. Uh, um, it showed um, many uh, 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 signs like uh, string signs, shouldering signs, and the mushroom-like signs. Also, delayed gastric emptying and the bird, the, the beak or bird beak appearance at the bioloric canal. So, uh, completing the diagnosis, what is the uh, metabolic uh, abnormalities? We know that this is one of the important slides, and uh, we will uh, uh, go through it slowly. So what's happened for the baby? Initially, baby will vomit, and this vomiting will lead to loss of the acid for the HCL. So he will lose chloride, and he will lose acid, and some limit, some limit he will lose also potassium. So to compensate this uh, um, uh, metabolic alkalosis, which happened because of this vomiting, kidney need to excrete by carb, but because of hypocholeremia, so kidney cannot excrete by carb. So, uh, and also at this stage, because of hypovolemia, the aldosterism will be secreted, which uh, uh, will cause uh, sodium retention to correct the uh, level of the uh, hypovolemia. So, uh, and the, uh, it will increase the excretion of potassium. So now we will end up with uh, metabolic alkalosis, hypochloremic, hypokalemic, metabolic alkalosis with uh, uh, excretion of more potassium through the kidney. At some limit, when the potassium is depleted and sodium reabsorbed uh, uh, instead of the hydrogen ion, now we will have, in spite patient is in metabolic alkalosis, he will develop paradoxical aciduria, uh, paradoxical aciduria. The rapid compensatory mechanism for this should, uh, it will be through the uh, hypoventilation. And the only way to uh, break down this uh, uh, metabolic derangement is to give him a fluid. So uh, we will go through the treatment point and what is the uh, preoperative preparation need to uh, be um, admitted to ward or to ICU according to his level of severity of fluid and electrolyte abnormality it's not a surgical emergency it is a medical emergency patient should be stabilized resuscitated well so uh, patient will kept MBO NGT what is the rule if NGT NGT uh, some advocate to not insert an NGT as NGT will cause more acid loss. What is the fluid of choice? Usually D5 and half normal saline plus the KCL uh, uh, infusion. De delaying the adding of the KCL, the giving the patient normal saline only, it will delay the resuscitation. Unless the baby has a, a, um, under uh, underlying uh, uh, renal disease or he is totally anuric, the, our creatinine is abnormal. That time we can uh, stop the giving the KCL. Other than this, we will give directly the fluid with this uh, uh, formula with 1.5 to 2 times the maintenance. And we will continue monitoring the urine output and serum 
electrolyte. So what is the end point of resuscitation? And that means when we will take the patient for OR, if we have adequate urine output, uh, correct the uh, chloride level uh, greater than uh, 100 milliequivalent per liter, or and bicarb should be less than 30. Why, sh why bicarb should be less than 30? Because the metabolic alkalosis will uh, cause and what's called alkalosis uh, induced apnea. So patient with, uh, with high bicarb, he might cause with this uh, apnea and it will cause prolonged intubation and prolonged uh, uh, ventilation. So what is the treatment? Now the operative treatment is drumstead, bilaromyotomy. Whatever is the uh, choice of the uh, access, abdominal access, either open or laparoscopy, either uh, through subcostal, through the uh, right uh, upper uh, quadrant uh, incision or semi lunar of the umbilicus or could be extended to omega incision or upper midline incision. Whatever is the Access it should be uh, Ramstead bilaromyotomy. So this is a quick small uh, video about the uh, surgery. Is opening now the uh, skin in the right upper quadrant, opening the muscle, entering the peritoneum, and he delivered the stomach uh, from the uh, uh, body. Then he reached to this bilaric mass, and we can see this bilaric mass like pale, hard, or or firm uh, mass. Uh, he will choose the anterior surface of bilorus, uh, the area of avascular plane, uh, and the landmark of the duodenum is the uh, of the is the vein of Mayo. Uh, only will opening the uh, serosa, and then uh, after that, with use of uh, benson, if it, uh, if somebody has the benson, the uh, spreader or the uh, hemostat with curved up, spreading the uh, muscle uh, till the uh, uh, mucosa and submucosa. Uh, appear to be this, um, uh, bulged out and uh, also at that point should be examined for any sign of perforation or incomplete myotomy, leaflet or all edge of the muscle should be, should be um, moving uh, uh, separately independently and should be examined by air um, uh, for any perforation. Laparoscopy, as we can see here, uh, this is uh, the position for laparoscopy and can be accomplished by um, umbilical uh, port for the camera and two three, three millimeter stab incision working board. Uh, it was using, uh, uh, I mean, in the past, they are using the uh, arthroscopic uh, knife, but now we can use the long uh, diathermy uh, tip directly. So we'll go for a short video. And uh, uh, as I said, only stabbing the, only uh, stabbing instrument can be inserted. Uh, this is the uh, bovi with the uh, uh, extended uh, uh, Tip and uh, cutting the uh, on, uh, with cutting mode or coagulation mode, cutting the anterior surface of the bilorus. Then with the with use of the same diathermy, it can be inserted and just twisted to uh, open the uh, or separate the muscle. Then after that, we can use the uh, uh, forceps for uh, more retraction or laparoscopic pinson if it's uh, available. Laparoscopic pinson for uh, muscle spreading. Okay, so and uh, what's next? Uh, now patient is underwent the bilaromyotomy and we can, as post-operative, you can initiate the feeding after four to six hours. We'll start with Pedialyte and the rest of this, like this schedule, then uh, gradually starting the uh, formula, uh, starting from 30 mil, then increase it up to the ad lib feeding. What is other options? There is a non operative option, but it's, uh, it's not yeah, almost almost uh, obsolete. Uh, some uh, were using uh, oral atropine or balloon dilatation, but it's not as effective as Ramstead so, uh, or as a surgical uh, um, intervention. So, what is the complication? Vomiting can be one of the complications. It cannot be even counted as complication because baby may, might be. Uh, st still uh, vomit because of uh, there is element of gastritis or gastric atony. Wound infection and incomplete myotomy can one of the complication and unsuspected perforation. If baby has persistent continuing vomiting more than uh, uh, a week, it might it might indicate for um, uh, re-explore the baby again. So going for the next topic bioloric atresia, and we'll go through these items through history, embryology, and presentation, end up with the treatment and outcome. Bioloric atresia is a rare uh, condition, as all of we know, that it has an incidence of uh, one bear over the um, 100,000 living bear. It consists of uh, one percent of all intestinal atresia, and it has a male to female ratio. In 1749, this first uh, uh, report to describe this, 
And in uh, 1940, uh, first successful procedure done for the pyloric atresia. Uh, we know that it's commonly uh, isolated anomaly, but sometimes it's treated with other anomaly like uh, epidermolysis uh, bullosa or uh, sometimes with congenital or familial uh, multiple intestinal atresia. When it's linked with uh, um, associated anomaly, it has a high mortality. What is the etiology? It's unknown, but uh, and what is the uh, pathology? Also, it's unknown, but there is um, a theories. Uh, one of the theory which has um, an accepted uh, over the other theories, it's a failure of recanalization. And the other is uh, like the other intestinal atresia, vascular, antenatal vascular accident. But uh, Weber also proposed an, uh, another theory, especially for pyloric atresia, which is associated with epidermolysis bullosa, that results from the uh, mucosal injury within the pylorus. And uh, this injury will heal with fibrosis and ongoing injury and uh, which will lead at the end for the scarring and pyloric uh, atresia and also uh, genetic predisposition is um, uh, has a role as there is uh, some families uh, familiar occurrence of the pyloric atresia so uh, what is the uh, how we can classify classify the pyloric atresia it can be classified either anatomically or clinically so the uh, clinical uh, uh, classification it can be isolated can be with epidermolysis abullosa or ablasia cutis congenita, and it can be associated with uh, intestinal atresia. Uh, if it's isolated, it has an excellent outcome and a good prognosis. But uh, once it's associated with the other uh, congenital anomaly, it will be um, high risk and it will be poor prognosis. So uh, usually uh, it can uh, combine it also with multiple um, atresia, and it also uh, has a high mortality. And uh, we know that. Uh, uh, hereditary multiple atres in cell atresia is a very rare condition and it has an autosomal recessive inheritance. So that indicates that if baby is uh, make it and uh, stayed alive, he need uh, to go for genetic counseling and also the same for the, his parents. Uh, there is other congenital anomaly reported uh, to be associated with uh, uh, biloric, uh, congenital pyloric atresia, Down syndrome, Michel de Verticulum, uh, urological abnormalities, uh, gallbladder abnormalities, also in rectal malformation and uh, cleft palate. Uh, for the anatomical classification, it can be classified into three types, either just membrane, which is the most common, uh, 57, but uh, be aware that it could be uh, multiple uh, membranes, not only one membrane. Uh, type 2, it's pyloric atresia, with uh, without gap, it's with sometimes connected with a cord. And the third uh, time, uh, the third type, which is the least common, is the pyloric atresia with gap between the stomach and the uterus. And what is the clinical presentation? Usually, it's non-bilious vomiting soon after birth. Uh, if he start feeding, it will be uh, milkish vomiting. Um, uh, upper abdominal distension with uh, distal abdomen is uh, being uh, normal or scaphoid. Hist of course, we will uh, take an antenatal history and history of bullhydrominus is uh, one of the important key to diagnose the pyloric atresia, sorry. And presence of other an associated anomalies will raise the suspicion of pyloric atresia. Sometimes the pyloric atresia will be a uh, sh uh, challenge to diagnose, especially in case of pure esophageal atresia. So in case, uh, at the time of creating the gastrostomy for the uh, pure esophageal atresia, it need to uh, take care for the uh, pyloric uh, atresia as one of the uh, congenital anomaly could be associated especially for that who for those who has the um, uh, hereditary uh, multiple intestinal atresia as the atresia can be happened at any any uh, position from uh, mouth uh, down to rectum. Also there is an, uh, another interesting presentation which is the um, pyloric atresia with distal duodenal atresia which making the or keeping the uh, duodenum like and closed loop and all the pancreatic and biliary secretions will accumulate and may lead to massive distinction of the duodenum, maybe perforation, maybe the, uh, this uh, biliary and the uh, creatic juices will reflux to the biliary system. One of the presentation, which is representation, is neonatal gastric perforation. So how we can diagnose it? Uh, history, 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 history of antenatal and postnatal, history of antenatal, of polyhydrominous and single bubble, single gastric bubble. So uh, that's uh, one of the uh, clue and physical examination with the uh, um, uh, upper abdominal uh, uh, distension and the associated anomaly will uh, raise the suspicion. Of course, the first modality of diagnosis is the uh, uh, x-ray 
which will show a gastric single gastric bubble and the diagnosis can be confirmed with the uh, contrast study. Going for the treatment, it depends on the anatomical type of the uh, bioric atresia. Type 1 and 2 can go uh, with um, uh, hennic mucoidal spiroblasty, either hennic mucoidal or fini spiroblasty. And uh, interoperative, it's an important, it's one of the important steps that to make sure that the only bioric diaphragm is present, as uh, it can be multiple. Also, uh, to check the potency of the remaining intestine, as it can be uh, uh, multiple uh, atresia uh, in the uh, GI. So some advocate to go for also for lower GI uh, enema to rule out any atresia in the colon. And the uh, saline um, test uh, to check for the potency of the GI system, it's one of the mandatory uh, steps in this surgery. Type 3, where there is gap, the treatment of choice is the bilirubinogenostomy. For the choice of gastrogenostomy, it should be avoided because it has a high morbidity and uh, it's in, uh, in, especially in the neonate and uh, could cause an anastomotic ulcer. Uh, gastrostomy is not part of the procedure unless there is a reason for it like an bioresophageal atresi. This is another uh, illustration for the uh, fini bilirubinoblasty where we will uh, incise the anterior part, anterior wall of the bilirus upper part of the duodenum and the uh, distal part of the stomach and will anastomose this end to each other and then will uh, like a posterior wall then this like an anterior wall. Uh, Hennig Michaelis Bailoroblasty is with uh, doing uh, gastrotomy and uh, shaking for other membrane then uh, closing it after opening it uh, transfer uh, longitudinal closing it transversely. So what is outcome? Outcome if it's isolated it will be good outcome. It's depend on the presence or absence of severe associated so if it's isolated, it will be a good outcome. But if it's associated with another um, uh, anomalies, like uh, we said that the epidermolysis bullosa or an inhibitory intestinal uh, atresia, uh, it will be poor outcome. As know that early diagnosis is uh, an, uh, one of the important uh, factors. And also um, there is now a uh, hope for those with um, uh, epidermolysis bullosa as there is, as it's responding well to the, um, to the steroids and the uh, phenytoin. So so um, now the babies with uh, epidermolysis bullosa is not as bad as the uh, babies with multiple hereditary intestinal atresia. We'll go for the next topic, which is bioloric duplication. Uh, uh, bioloric duplication uh, is, uh, is one of the least common uh, cause of elementary duplication. Initially, gastric duplication is the least common cause, the least common uh, type of elementary duplication, and bioloric uh, duplication is also uh, the rarest among all of them, as the gastric duplication usually uh, occur in the greater cribbage. Uh, and presentation, usually they will present with uh, non-bilious vomiting, weight loss, and sometimes bleeding and pain in the first two to three uh, weeks of life, and sometimes the presentation can be delayed. Bioloric duplication is more common in girls, and uh, we know that the uh, duplication cysts usually share the uh, common wall uh, within the stomach or pylorus, and but it's rarely to uh, communicate. Uh, histologically, it has uh, contained smooth muscle, and the uh, ectopic tissue inside this uh, by, uh, uh, duplication is usually pancreatic tissue. Sometimes it can contain gastric uh, tissue. What is uh, uh, usually it's mistaken with the hypertrophic bioloric stenosis. So initially the presentation will uh, will thought as bioloric stenosis. So it will carry the same uh, way of diagnosis. So we'll go with ultrasound, but ultrasound will not show a thick or I mean the hypertrophic bioloric mass. It will show a cyst and the cyst has a characteristic that there is muscular rim which will show uh, like double wall and also CT and MRI can be helpful in the diagnosis as well as the upper GI. Sometimes the condition is uh, uh, difficult to diagnose preoperative and it um, maybe only need surgery or operative intervention to be diagnosed. Diagnosed. Procedure of choice is also um, an extra mucosal excision, and occasionally the uh, cyst gastrostomy may be necessary as if the uh, total excision of the mass is uh, difficult, or sometimes excision of the mass with uh, more stabilization or with the uh, of the edges or with excision of the mucosal only. Going for the next topic, which is the volvulus of the stomach. Volvulus is a rare condition, and we will know why it's a rare condition, because of the stomach uh, position and because of the stomach attachment. can occur at any age, 
but majority in children is in uh, younger than one year uh, age. Uh, why it's rare, as I said, because of its attachment. It has a lot of attachment. It has attachment with gastrophrenic ligaments, esophageal hiatus, retroperitoneal fixation of the duodenum, one of the causes of the its, uh, really fixed attachment, short gastric uh, vessels, which is short and not floppy, and gastrocolic ligaments. So it can be primary or secondary. Primary, if this attachment is lax or, or absent of this attachment. Or secondary, if there is an, any other associated pathological condition like diaphragmatic hernia, uh, hiatal hernia, um, uh, wandering spleen, or absence of this ligament. It can be classified into uh, either um, organoaxial or mesent uh, mesenteroaxial, organoaxial. As we can say, the, the stomach will uh, vulvulate over each longitudinal axis, where the uh, body will uh, go more uh, above the and the uh, yeah the body will go on the uh, anterior surface of the stomach and the mesenteroaxial where the uh, stomach will vulvulate around uh, its uh, transverse axis so uh, torsion could be uh, uh, acute which is life threatening and should be uh, an uh, urgent and rapid intervention should be started or it can be chronic or transient disorder especially in infant with neuromuscular disorder what is the clinical uh, feature uh, failure to uh, to attempt desired vomiting, uh, failure to insert an NG tube, and upper abdominal distension, um, feeding problem uh, with uh, growth failure, abdominal pain, cyanosis, respiratory symptoms, sometimes abdominal pain. All of these can be presented as we also, uh, we have to know the Borchardt triad. What is the uh, diagnostic modalities? Uh, radiological modalities, what we have, X-rays and contrast study and CT, uh, it will confirm the diagnosis. Also, it will uh, show the other associated Anomalies. So it will show like here this, uh, we can see here the, uh, this is organoaxial uh, volvulus where the uh, body of the stomach is uh, volvulated uh, and going anteriorly. Here it's uh, also organoaxial. Here is the uh, mesenteroaxial where the bilorus is going anteriorly and above the level of the esophagogastric uh, junction. What is the treatment? It's a surgical treatment and operative and non-operative. Usually if they present uh, with an acute uh, obstruction, it should be uh, sur an urgent surgical intervention to prevent a uh, catastrophic uh, outcome. Uh, what is the operative strategies is if, if the gastric decompression can be, can be made preoperatively, it's well, if it's difficult, uh, it can't be. Uh, so um, intraoperative decompression uh, first, then uh, after um, uh, restoring the normal anatomy, stomach carefully inspected to identify possible area of perforation or gangrene. Rest of, of procedure is, uh, is just uh, well, uh, looking for any associated anomalies like the pragmatic hernia, hiatal hernia, any other secondary uh, reason for the uh, volvulus and to be corrected. And then the main uh, part of the procedure is to uh, either go for anterior gastrobixy or gastrostomy. And uh, we have to know that the recurrence is one of the causes, one of the um, uh, potential uh, complication uh, for the gastric volvulus. And it's also being repeated, uh, reported. Uh, what is the non-operative? Non-operative strategy include uh, positioning and feeding, positioning the baby on his right side or brawn and um, uh, feeding him uh, with the uh, uh, fractionated his feet. Going for the uh, next uh, topic, which is gastric antral web. It's also called a prebiloric web or mucosal diaphragm, which is one of the rare cause of gastric outlet obstruction. The histology of this web is composed of normal, uh, non-inflamed mucosa and submucosal gastric uh, uh, mural uh, layer. Uh, it's present with varying uh, degree of uh, non-bilious vomiting. It can be, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, symptoms will be correlated according to the opening of this web. If it's, if opening is uh, more than one centimeter, so usually sometimes it will be asymptomatic or uh, with uh, minimal degree of symptoms. If it's less than one centimeter, it will uh, be uh, more symptomatic. Most children uh, will present in their uh, early life, but it can be uh, delayed till the uh, adulthood. And the these mucosal uh, web are uh, sometimes being uh, like uh, uh, seeing like uh, a bulb or seeing like uh, what's called uh, another chamber which sometimes can give uh, a uh, picture of double bubble uh, in uh, upper GI and uh, but there is uh, of course there is uh, distal aeration with this uh, fine uh, ultrasound may be show also a web uh, and related gastric outlet anatomy and of course the treatment of choice is 
gastrotomy and excision and uh, maybe bileroblasty also. So next uh, differential diagnosis of gastric outlet obstruction is gastric polyp. Although it's uh, less common in pediatric and it, uh, than the adult, but it can happen as part of um, polyposis syndrome or isolation or, or isolated um, uh, feature. Uh, it can be uh, pedunculated or can be sessile as this polyp will close the uh, either. If it's pedunculated, it could be enteral or from the uh, higher than uh, the higher in the stomach, which uh, will uh, drag it down to the bileric opening and uh, obstructing it. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, it will uh, have hematemesis, baby will have hematemesis, medina, or anemia. And it could be hyperplastic or adenomatous. We know that adenomatous is associated with high risk of malignancy, where and the hyperplastic is less. Uh, uh, diagnosis be, may be made by the ultrasound or be by the upper GI, which will demonstrate an intranominal mass and might be, as I said, bulboid or uh, C-side. Next. Uh, uh, differential is bizarre and we know bizarre is uh, with we have a different type of bizarre it can be uh, composed of different material uh, like hair which will give us a trichobizoar or medication pharmacobizoar or a specific uh, milk like in an in infant which will cause a lactobizoar and phytobizoar so uh, endoscopic uh, removal can be performed but uh, mainly we require surgical removal as the uh, pieces will be uh, very uh, large to be removed from the esophagus and sometimes even if it's fractionated inside the stomach uh, it will cause an injury to the esophagus so most of the uh, surgeon will advocate to go for surgical intervention. Uh, imaging of uh, choice uh, is x-ray, um, uh, upper GI and uh, CT can be. All the modalities can diagnose the uh, uh, bizarre. However, sometimes it's an interoperative uh, uh, finding. Trichobizoar usually uh, seen in girls more than uh, more than uh, boys, especially with girls with trachea, uh, tracheomania or tra tracheophagia, those who is eating their hair. Here we can see the trichobizoar which taking the shape of the stomach and also this one which is called Rapunzel syndrome where there is a tail going down to the uh, through the duodenum down to the um, uh, small intestine. Uh, trichobizoar also uh, uh, can be associated with a, a psychiatric uh, illness especially in adolescents. Pharmacobizoar is usually uh, in younger population as in pediatric, uh, it's less in, in younger population as in pediatric, usually the medication is uh, composed of liquid uh, material where in the uh, adolescent or adult it will be like tablets, uh, but uh, it can be seen in pediatric also. Uh, what is the risk factor of the um, uh, pharmacobizoar? It's uh, either altered anatomy or altered motility or chronic illness or with certain medication. One important point here in uh, patient with pharmacobizoar or suspected pharmacobizoar as the upper GI uh, can cause some harm because it will either uh, dislodge some of this medication down to the uh, uh, GI system so it will be absorbed and cause toxicity of this uh, medication. Lactobizoar which is confined to infant uh, and um, uh, pediatric population, commonly in the infant fed concentrated formula, but also can be reported in, it's, it's, it was reported also in infant with breast milk and soy milk. Also here we can see, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, lactobizoar and this is the uh, uh, pharmacobizoar. Here is the uh, phytobizoar where sometimes a uh, 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 certain type of fruits or vegetables will accumulate and causing gastric outlet obstruction. Um, the other differential of the gastric outlet obstruction is hypertrophic ectopic pancreas, which is one of the really rare causes of the uh, gastric outlet obstruction, but it, it's reported and uh, ectopic pancreas is any pancreatic tissue in location other than its normal location and uh, it found uh, to be in autopsies uh, like uh, one in each 500 autopsy and uh, it found uh, to be in men more than female. Uh, the uh, ectopic pancreas seen in 90% uh, of it in uh, stomach, duodenum and jejunum. So majority of it, it's uh, uh, asymptomatic but the, the, the symptomatic one is what is, uh, it's the, the, the extremely rare and only uh, about nine cases reported, uh, nine units reported with have uh, symptomatic ectopic pancreas and uh, which were located in the bilirus or peripyrolic area and uh, cause as gastric outlet obstruction. Uh, onset of symptoms uh, is ranged from one day to three weeks. And most of the uh, initial symptoms were non vomiting, could be gastrointestinal bleed. Uh, 
those Ayo. Uh, like we have five minutes and then we'll go for the questions, please. Okay. Okay. The, uh, I think I have only three slides uh, to be to finish the presentation. It's sometimes difficult to diagnose, uh, even uh, interoperatively difficult to diagnose. Ultrasound, our GI can help. Sometimes our GI can, can show a uh, pre-bioloric mass with a central amplification or bioloric uh, obstruction. This is an uh, uh, interoperative uh, picture of the uh, hypertrophic bioloric stenosis with the amplification. And of course, the treatment is uh, local excision through open or laparoscopic approach. The thing is neoplasm, and neoplasm can be either primary from the uh, stomach, which is rare in pediatric, but can be in um, uh, elder children. Uh, it can be like uh, GEST or uh, lymphoma. Uh, other neoplasm can cause gastric outlet obstruction. It's an extra uh, gastric uh, tumors from the surrounding epigastric area, like uh, could be a liver tumor, hepatoblastoma, or hepatocellular carcinoma, pancreatic blastoma, or other uh, masses or tumors that can compress the uh, gastric outlet and cause gastric outlet obstruction. Sorry for exceeding the uh, allowed time, and I hope it was informative, and uh, thank you for you. Thank you very much for your extensive review. Uh, we've got uh, multiple questions, so we would like to ask you. Uh, the first question uh, is asking about uh, nasogastric tube uh, should be put in uh, idiopathic hypertrophic pyloric uh, stenosis during recitation or only preoperatively uh, uh, because it's controversial uh, so uh, it's it's controversial but um, now most of the surgeon advocate uh, to not insert and nasogastric tube only mbo will will uh, decrease the gastric content and the uh, putting the ng tube will uh, will will associated with excreting or with suctioning high volume of acids which will contribute in more uh, metabolic derangement Okay, the second question I have is uh, the role of uh, non-surgical treatment for the idiopathic uh, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Yes, uh, there is some reports, but now um, all obsolete, some reports of the uh, uh, atrobine. Uh, and uh, I review some of the literature with uh, using the atrobine sulfate for as oral atrobine sulfate, which was having like 35% uh, of failure rate and prolonged treatment uh, more than uh, three weeks, uh, up to six weeks. So uh, I think uh, Ramstead is uh, quick, uh, less uh, complicating uh, procedure and with uh, excellent and good outcome. And uh, of course, less uh, stress for the patient and family and less stress and less cost or low cost for the hospitals. Super, I've got uh, another question from Safina Karim. She's asking, what is, this, uh, what is the choice of uh, recitation fluid that you use in uh, idiopathic uh, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis? Yes, we'll, uh, we'll start with uh, in, uh, the dextrose 5 and uh, half normal saline with additional of 20 milli uh, equivalent of KCL unless there is under no, uh, well-known underlying uh, renal disease or the creatinine is very high. So we'll wait for the potassium till the normalizing and the start uh, uh, normalization of the urine uh, of the creatinine and uh, to start uh, to see the urine output. As uh, changing, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, delaying starting the KCL will uh, delaying also the resuscitation and normalization of the potassium. So there there is no reason to to delay the KCL if there is no if, if everything is normal if the uh, creatinine is normal and he has good urine output. Okay, then I have another question from Farooq Abdullah. He's asking about the role of fund of glycation in cases of gastric valvulus. I'm not aware of any. I what we know is the gastropexy or the gastrostomy. gastrostomy. Do you have any role of fund of glycation for those patients? Uh, no special role for fund duplication unless it's uh, uh, it was associated with some of the pathologies with which fund duplication is a uh, treatment of choice for them because we know that volvulus it's uh, primary and secondary but for volvulus itself uh, I mean gastrobixi and or gastro gastrostomy is only the treatment of choice. Uh, next. Uh, question from Mohamed Al uh, mm -hmm. He's thanking you and he's saying for hyper, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, if perforation happened during the uh, pyloromyotomy and gastric side, would you close the mucosa and uh, redo it uh, in the posterior wall or what's your approach? 
really there is a lot of options here uh first thank him for the question uh, it's a really good question and uh, uh one of the uh technique we, it can be used is just to close the mucosa especially if the perforation is very small uh, with a few interrupted stitches and put like uh, an omentum if there is any omentum uh, available uh, and without closing the muscle uh, and um, uh, i'm going with this uh, 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 this choice other choice is to close the muscle, the anterior, and to flip the bilorus and to do a posterior bilateral myotomy. Uh, this is other uh, uh, also approach. Okay, I've got another question from Al Dahoum. He's asking mm -hmm. about uh, when do you call the uh, pyloric, like the treatment of the uh, pyloric stenosis, unsuccessful, unsuc or you call it a recurrent of the pyloric stenosis? And uh, what's the option for uh, the uh, redo? Do you go for the same site or what do you do exactly? I think the correct, maybe the, the correct terminology, we can say it, um, uh, incomplete uh, bilaromyotomy rather than recurrent. Uh, because uh, I don't think recurrent is, uh, can be happened with few, uh, with few uh, days. But uh, if the vomiting persists more than a week, vomiting persists and the symptoms persist, um, I'm quite sure that no uh, radiological investigation will help uh, in identifying if it's still there is uh, a remaining uh, bilaric uh, hypertrophy because you will find the same mass in the ultrasound also you will find the same uh, feature in the upper GI so I think uh, if the baby is still uh, resistantly having this vomiting and uh, the same feature with projectile vomiting and the same same metabolic derangement uh, after one week I think he deserve uh, Okay, I have two more questions. Uh, one from Ali Al Khamis. He's asking about what you will do for ectopic pancreatic uh, tissue in, in the pylorus or pylor. Yes, um, uh, as I mentioned before, it's just simple excision, uh, gastrotomy, and simple excision for the pancreatic tissue. That's the, the only, without excision of the uh, uh, part of the stomach, only mucosa and submucosal and excising the, the, the ectopic tissue and keep the uh, muscle in, uh, integrity as, as it is. Aziz? Just a minute, I have two more questions. Uh, uh, Mohammed Azhar is asking, mm. uh, ga in gastric volvulus, uh, what do you prefer, mm. gastropexy or gastrostomy tube? Uh, I, I think gastrobixi can be performed uh, uh, easily, especially through a laparoscopic approach. Uh, I will go uh, with the uh, la gastrobixi in more than one point, as the baby has no, um, I mean, indication to go for uh, gastrostomy except the volvulus. So we'll go with the gastrobixi. Unless he has any other reason, he will need the gastrostomy. I would go for gastrostomy. Okay, I've got one more question uh, from Najia Yunus. She's asking, uh, for how long do you wait uh, for a pyloromyotomy uh, to think to reoperate? Like, for how long to label it as incomplete mm. pyloromyotomy? Yeah, uh, again, uh, like what's written in literature is uh, if baby has still uh, has uh, uh, resistant vomiting with the same picture, projectile vomiting, same metabolic derangement, uh, more than a week. Uh, so more than a week, it's uh, the time to go for, to think for re-exploration. I have one more question from Nhor Malik. Uh, she's asking why you go for posterior and interior wall in pyloromyotomy and don't you use a lateral walls in, ca in case uh, of perforation if it occurred? First, that's the area where less uh, 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 blood supply, a vascular, almost a vascular blame. So, and we know that uh, in the lateral or uh, the anti maybe she meant the, the, the superior and inferior. Superior and inferior, there is blood supply and the blood is, uh, vessels is uh, coming from that area. But, anterior, but the anterior surface and posterior surface, almost a, uh, there is a vascular blame. And just to uh, make it uh, more clear that in case of perforation, one of the options is to uh, close the muscle from the anterior. It's not just to leave it to do like anterior and posterior. To close the muscle over the, uh, uh, and to close the mucosa and to close the muscle of, over the perforation and then to go for a posterior uh, bilaromyotomy. Uh, Alwi, thank you very, very much for your time uh, and uh, for your effort. Excellent presentation. Uh, you covered the topic very nicely and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abdel Aziz. Uh, thank you for organizing committee and thank you for the audience and I hope it was an informative lecture. Thank you very much.